China, yeah, we know that in China they worship Guan Yin, the God of Mercy. We know there that the ruler of all gods is 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 what is, who they call Jade Jade Emperor. How then are their gods more superior than than the gods of China or Japan? What about the Aborigines with Baninicha? You understand? What about what about the Yoruba? Yeah, with Olorun. What about the Ghanaians? You understand? With uh, with Niami. Yeah, what about them? Yeah, what is it? What about the Peruvians? Yeah, with Verococca. What is it about Islam that believes, even the Norse gods, but then they term anything that they don't wish to believe today, they say it's a mythology. Do you understand? And so in, in one swipe, you take away the belief system. What I've done through my travels around the world, I've realized that everybody who has a belief system, something amazing happens. And it's this, that the belief systems that exist that exist in these countries, all of them preceded Islam. Every single one of them, every single one of these belief systems. But because you have a political religion, because that's what Islam is, it's a political religion. This is the reason why you can go down to Hyde Park and you can go in the casinos and you can see the fat sheikhs and stuff with their underage girls and, and, and their wild excess. You understand? They understand that Islam, Islam is a political aspect. For me, if a man wants to be Islamic, I don't have any problem with that. My belief, and I'll come to now, I'm Hino feasting. Simply meaning this, if you have a God, you have a right to have your God. Just don't tell me that I should have it. Yeah, if you if you study what if you study you believe one of the Indian gods, you actually have a right. I don't have a right to tell you that you shouldn't have that belief. There is only one religion that exists in this world today that says that whatever religion you have is not good enough. And then when I point out to him, uh, did you hear what that Muslim guy said? Oh, you're just pressing repeat. I'm asking you, let's look on the micro level. If I was to meet, I'm married by the way, but if I was to meet a girl today, and I wasn't married, but I will remain married, I have to say that just in case my wife is in And I met a woman today, and when I met a woman today, and I met her at the bar, and I said, oh, I'm just going to the bathroom. I didn't come back from the bathroom. She doesn't know me, where have you been? Oh, Jesus Christ, that's not someone that I'm gonna stay with because it started badly, and the thing is, why take the chance? I'm not gonna stay with it. But then you look at a religion, you think about this, that they make claims that no other religion makes. They say that their religion is built, they said it is perfect. How many times have you been in Hyde Park and they say, get one scholar, one scientist who can challenge one word of scripture? How many times? How many times? It's nonsensical. Yeah, it's nonsensical. And I'm going to tell you why. Two things. Look at the origin of the religion, which they say is a peaceful religion. Look at the origins of it. When I mentioned about the Khalees, no Muslim wants to hear about the Khalees. They hate it. Do you know the reason why? Because just like meeting a girl for the first time who's horrendous and you want nothing to do with it, if you understand Islam and its origins, you will not have anything to do with it. Because if you say that Prophet Muhammad was perfect and he lived the perfect life and he claim that he got scriptures over a 23 year period in an area which was polytheistic yeah which took their which took their teachings from Islam, from um, Judaism from Christianity from a uh, polytheism and a whole range a whole range of Iranian religions you know that over that 23 year period they made up these religions it was a trading port the Kaaba which all Muslim thinks is so holy they had 360 gods which they worship there and so when you say to a Muslim well hold on a minute you say that your religion is perfect well who was the baton passed to allegedly allegedly Abu Bakr he lived for two years he was a warlord yeah, just like Muhammad and they say well Muhammad you know he was chased from his home and so on and so forth let me tell you this read up on Islamic history one of the reasons why a lot of people lose when they debate the Muslims because they don't understand the Muslim the chronology of Islam so when you say to them who was Umar and you say was the second Caliph he was murdered ask them how he was murdered and who by from the religion of peace and then you had the third Caliph it was Uthman you understand ask them 
how Uthman was murdered. In fact, go back to Umar and say, how is it that they managed to conquer so much land with their murdering hordes and then imposing two taxes? One, the jizya, or the non-believers. You understand? The other one is, I think it's Karaj, I can't pronounce it properly. But what people did, because they realized that if they converted to Islam, if they convert to Islam, they wouldn't pay the tax. People are like, bollocks for that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna convert to Islam. This is not an argument. I've sat down with their best Imams, with their best Imams, and they've not been able to contradict what I've said. This was Umar who brought this in. What was Umar's punishment? He was murdered. I'm not gonna tell you who by, look it up for yourself. Who was the third Caliph of Islam? There were five major ones, and after five they thought, you know, we're not gonna go ahead with this any longer. They then brought in Uthman, do you understand? More murderous than Umar. How did he meet his end? Do you understand how? He was murdered. Then they brought in Ali. Ali believed that he should have been the first caliph. And if you read the final sermon, yeah, by Muhammad, yeah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you read that and it is clear, it is clear that it should have been Ali. Do you understand? You say that amongst Muslims, that's shirk, that's disbelief. Ali, Amongst amongst these murders, these murderers is prostrate. Is the fourth is the fourth caliph, yeah, the fourth caliph. He is prostrate. The followers, the followers of Islam, murdered him whilst he was in prayer. You understand? And then they brought in Mutawahid, who was the fifth caliph. I'm asking you. Remember what I said? If you meet a girl and she's a bit dodgy, and why would I stay with you? You have a religion, yeah, that was started in ignorance bloodshed and murder and today you want to bring that to 2016 and give me the new unbridled uh, varnished uh, version of that religion for me to believe no way I'm henophistic believe what you want to believe I don't believe listen, it Islam has no solid foundation Pardon? it has no solid foundation listen let me just say to you if you look trust me leave religion for a moment and look at politics and look at the politics of Arabia at that time it was no such thing as Saudi Arabia, by the way, that came about in 1932 with the gangster Al Saud family, right. yeah, where, where, where the British and the Americans under the State Department of America, the Dulles brothers, one in oil, one in the State Department, now well. drew, drew a line in the sand and gave it to gangster it's families. now that um, this country is starting to say, all right, we're going to try and draw away lines between Saudi Arabia and England, you know, with the weapons yeah. and the weapons. So no, 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 no. They're, they're that's talking more in the media I'm on about. More, no, no. The radio. Well, that's because of 9/11. There is yeah. no media. There is no media. There are only six corporations in this world, yeah, that own over seven and a half thousand, seven and a half thousand corporations. Yeah, they get their messages centrally, and then they disseminate those messages. You understand? If, let me tell you the. Let me tell you a very strange thing. You remember I, I spoke to you about politics earlier on. Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia's number one ally in the Middle East is who? Um, Thank you very much. Now, you're talking about the house, the house, people who say they have the lineage of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and their number one partner in the Middle East, yeah, is who? Who are Saudi Arabia bombing today? Because remember I told you it's political, you know? They're bombing, they're bombing Yemen today. Right. And when did that start? Yeah, I wouldn't know that. Pardon? Let me tell you when that started. That started 1400 years ago under King Ahara. I think it's King Ahara. Do you understand? Who was the king? Who was the king of Yemen and refused to succumb? Yeah, to the Quraysh and the Mohammedans. Do you understand? And so what they did, they went to war against Yemen. Just like today, you have those who are against the teachings of Abdul Wahab. And, right. and Wahhabism, right. do you understand? Wahhabi you've it's seen, it's you've it's seen. It's extreme you, Islam. Well, but hold on, there's no such thing as extreme right. Islam. You only have Islam, okay. do you understand? But I'm telling you, if you look at the teachings of, if you look at the teachings of Abdul Wahhab, for example, and you look at what they have done and what they are doing now, I'm asking you, are they at war today with Iran? Yes or no? Yes, they are. And why are they at war with them? Why is Saudi at war with Iran today? principally yeah why are they at war with sections of lebanon today yeah you want me to tell you why because they say that they are shia they understand and as a result of that they believe they should be a victory did you hear what that muslim said to me they're, oh they're not muslims they're not muslims 
If you went and had a conversation with him, I guarantee you he doesn't know the second thing about Islam. What they've become, they've become sounding boards. So I've heard that from my Imam and so it must be correct. Do you remember three, four weeks ago when I spoke to that Muslim guy? Yes. And, he, and he told me about, he told me, he thought he was speaking to an idiot. And when I said to him, I said to him, what do you mean what I said? He said, brother, you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, the back guy, yeah. And he said to me, uh, 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 um, uh, well, I'm going to go and find out and come back in three weeks. I said, brother, you're an idiot. Yeah, you've come down here proselytizing. You're telling me what this belief system is. You've spoken something that I've told you is a lie. Do you understand? And he couldn't. And what did he do? Oh, I'll come back in three weeks. Do you understand? But if you look at the cultural appropriation of him, he has the beard, he has the headscarf on, he loves ISIS. I'm telling you now, if I was British intelligence, I'd be watching him. Do you understand? I'm telling you that. Who were his complexion in Libya, he had never heard of it. I said, you've never heard of the Tuagra? I said, in Libya, they cleaned out cities of black men who look just like you. And what did they do? Didn't believe you had to post it online. And what did, what did that man, um, I've forgotten his name, in Libya, when they said to him that you're, he said, you're dealing in genocide. He said, I am happy to use that word. That's what he said. I'm happy to use that word. And so this man became Muslim yeah and at the same time jettisoned his nature as a black man do you understand and then here's the bait and switch when you speak to most muslims now if you mention anything that black people went through they say well you know prophet muhammad said that there's no difference between them um, the listen keep that yeah it's an absolute lie if they're going to say that do you know what i will quote i will quote the 1976 race relations act you understand that was brought in under labor you understand because they brought that act in in order to civilize white people and tell them to treat black people halfway decent the fact that they have that law does not mean that we've been treated well and the fact that they say that prophet muhammad said that there is no difference between the colors doesn't mean that muslims so-called light-skinned muslims treat you well because the evidence both anecdotal and empirical is that they treat us like fourth class citizens you can see it here when you have a dark-skinned man like myself or if you look at sarah or is it gary or one of them anytime you watch youtube anytime you hear these guys speak and you look at the bayon pack around them and it's almost like how dare this nigger how dare we don't where we come from people who are our complexion are silent do you understand because they're happy to have us in that position they want us to have their names their language, their culture, their interpretation of religion. They want to have the cultural appropriation. Do you understand? So we become like them. So but you like stand up. It's if you like stand you. up, if you stand up and you say, well, I don't believe what you believe. And I can tell you that your belief is rooted in superstition. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you, if you, if you understand that if you deal with these people and you come out with a concept which is not their concept, a belief which is not rooted in their belief, an understanding which is not rooted in their understanding and a wisdom that they haven't given you, all of a sudden you're a troublemaker and you're talking shite and we don't want to listen to you. I don't believe what they believe and I tell you this, most of them don't really believe what they believe. They believe but their belief, yeah, mostly is geo strategic. Do you understand? And that's the reason why, if you put them in, in Colombia, do you understand? They would be Catholics. Right. Well done, brother. There you have it. Very good.